Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here. Welcome to a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. And today you may be like, what is this shirt you're wearing? It stands out like a sore thumb. Well, I got a shirt from those guys, you know, the Box Mac. You know, I told you guys to check out the video last time. They actually sent me the shirt that they wear in the videos. You know, so showing the macaroni and cheese videos. Because if you guys didn't see it, check out the link and check out their channel. They do like reviews of macaroni and cheeses and go to places and, you know, weird small fairs and uh, book fairs and all kinds of stuff. But I wanted to wear this out, but I'm sure people are going to be looking at me like, what are you wearing this kind of shirt? You're sticking out like a sore thumb. But, you know, I, I don't mind. I'm, I'm wearing it out. But, you know, I'm going to go out today, see what stuff came out today. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to have some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. We'll have my DVD update up as well, too, uh, this weekend, or may have it up earlier, like a day earlier, because I'm going to be going to um, Son of Monster Palooza this weekend. So if any of you guys are there in Burbank, you know, definitely say hello. I'll be there on um, Saturday, walking around, and, you know, Wet Moe would be there, and a, a bunch of people would be there as well. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Yeah, but one of the big things that came out today, you know, was Furious 7, and I talked about that in one of the last updates. And they have, like, an exclusive soundtrack sampler with their edition, but doesn't seem to be any uh, steelbooks or anything for this one. I don't know if there was or not. Uh, there might have been, but I'll have to see in the section if there were for this one. It's funny walking around here with this loud shirt, because you know me, I always wear like the one colored shirt, always have the same stuff on, so I never really have anything that literally stands out or has any logos or anything. So this is like one of the first times I think I might have done this, I can think of ever. Yeah, and Cinderella came out today from Disney. I'm going to review that in the update this weekend. I really like this one. I thought this was a really good movie, though. Yeah, but I don't see any addition of this. It seems to be the only thing that's like special is the soundtrack sampler thing for this. And, um, you know, and then Love and Mercy came out today as well. And I'm going to have a review of that coming up. I really love that one. And then it seems like some of the only other things today was, you know, Sleepy Hollow, which I've never actually seen any seasons of this one. And then this new collection of Fast and Furious, I think there's a Blu-ray as well, which has all seven movies. And they have this cool kind of tin set of um, Gotham, which I didn't see last time in here, which is pretty cool. I got all in this, you know, the first season of the cool tin, like, you know, Target exclusive. And I want to see if the Halloween stuff was out in here yet, but look, as you can see, it's not out yet. But a lot of places have started opening the store, so I at some point want to do like a video going like a whole bunch of different Halloween stores and stuff and looking at them. And hopefully soon, you know, Target stuff will have them. And this is like one of the first years too I can actually like get costumes and stuff like that and wear them if I want. But there is some Halloween stuff out. You know, you could get this, you know, creepy like, you know, wolf rug thing that you, you, know, you can put down on the ground. It kind of looks like the wolf head and like, I don't know, almost like the wolf head in the howling too, a little bit. And you have to hear that song. In the moonlight comes we begin to begin together. If you saw that movie, you know that song. And there's a few other things out here too, you know, some skeletons and stuff like this. And like, sort of like hippie skeleton. And I always like these talking things though. This, this, this seems to just do beeps. I don't know if this is supposed to, I guess this is an alien skeleton hand. I don't I do not know. Maybe this one does it. Nope, that, that's all it does. No, wait, I read it. You, you hold it and then it, it talks back. Hello, go away, children. Oh, go away, children. Oh, go away, children. Uh-oh. So you can be bad with this. Uh, I took a big fat dump. Uh, I took a big fat dump. That could be a good old-fashioned, inappropriate Halloween toy to put out. Who knows what people might might have that skeleton say. Box Mac. Macaroni. Into Walmart we go. I love how you turn one of these $5 bins into a candy thing, but then they like put all the candies, but then they left this one Land Before Time one there. They forgot to remove it. Yeah, well, they, they have a limited collector's edition of Furious 7, which is like, I guess it has exclusive content and then um, bonus, you know, the packaging. So I guess it's like a different slip cover. And they have, you know, the Halloween stuff out here, the Halloween horror movies, but nothing really that different here this year. I think, um, you know, they put Jumanji in here, but that's not really a Halloween horror movie, though. But they do have this now released really single for people who don't have it. The, the Halloween producer's cut. You know, this is the one that was only in the set. So now you can get it, you know, a single standalone edition if you guys don't have that one or didn't get that set. But nothing else too different for the Halloween stuff. Into the soup plantation we go. Hey, 
got to mix this up, but there's, you know, there's no bowls. You always have to mix it in this plate, and it, and it spills everywhere. So you can make a gigantic mess in the soup plantation. It's very busy in here today. Yep. Should be eating macaroni and cheese with this shirt, though, but I can't eat it. Busy today. It is busy. Pete Soupy. Into Baltimore snowballs we go. What perfect weather for a snowball. Nice and rainy days. Leaking all over the place. Yep, snowball weather. Pink lemonade. I haven't had any of this in years, and like, they don't even really have these out here, because this is like, they say it's Baltimore, but it has all those kinds you saw in the thing, like these kind of weird toppings and stuff you can put on it, but I just got it plain, because I have the Gulf Suns too, and I don't like put anything with fat on anything, and anything like that, but it's something different, but you know, it is very sweet, but it's just something different, just to try something different again. But very, very sweet though. Into fries we go. It's a very weird parking lot with these like really weird red lights and stuff. It looks like, I don't know, I don't, I guess I haven't been here at night, but it's very creepy here. Stuff. But I only ate like a little bit of that snowball. It's weird. I guess when you don't have things like that are real sweet like that for so long, you really, really lose the taste of it. And like, to me, it just like sort of sweeted me up. And I'm like, it's not the kind of thing I feel like I'm gonna really want again. I don't know. It's like, it's like we with soda and stuff. It's like after you kind of are away from something like that for so long, you kind of lose the taste for it. I guess the quarantine is over because the lights now in here that you know that had the red like look to them now they've turned to you know uh, orangey kind of thing isn't that really weird like the seconds ago they were red like the quarantine like it was going to be like an outbreak and now they've changed so I have no idea what that's about in the Best Buy we go and they have like an exclusive you know Cinderella one here with this cover on it you know one of the only at Best Buy ones you know the particular packaging for that one it's funny, this was like just randomly sitting here, like, you know, that let's go, Ghostbusters, let's go. You know, that one. I, as a kid, like, I was always so confused with this. Like, I never understood how there was, like, two Ghostbusters. And in here, though, they do have, but it's $159, the Lost in Space, the complete collection. But see, I think it's been cheaper on the Fox Connect site. Hopefully down the line it goes down in price, because I always love this show, but that 160 bucks is really high. It's funny they have in here, I never see these kind of things anymore, a single, like a, I guess it's an exclusive for churches, I love this music, the new one doesn't come out to the 25th, but I might just get this just because, I, I think it might have like a different, one song on here that isn't on the other one, it might, I don't know, i just get it for two dollars. Yeah, I'll probably just get this for two bucks, I already have the other one pre-ordered on Amazon though, the limited edition one. Well that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video to th to but well, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. All I got was this single thing. Um, but, you know, I've, like I said, I haven't seen these things in years. I remember seeing them in, like, The Wall. If anyone remembers The Wall, seeing them on, like, cassette tapes and stuff. But anyway, though, guys, stay tuned now for some uh, DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And like I said, too, if you guys see me at Monster Palooza this Saturday at uh, Burbank, definitely say hello. Thanks again for watching. Well, the first one I got from Mill Creek is The Big Picture. It's a Christopher Gus film, which I somehow had never seen this one before. You know, it stars Kevin Bacon, Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Martin Short. It's basically about, you know, Kevin Bacon, who's this film school student who's just graduated from film school. He, you know, he they kind of had like a student kind of Academy Award of like film school projects and things like that. And his film actually won the best picture there. So he kind of has this kind of chip on his shoulder and kind of has this feeling like oh he's gonna make it because this one guy there approaches him you know an agent and tells him basically that he's going to help him get all this kind of work and he's kind of thinking things are going to start to really happen for him and then he ends up meeting this other guy who introduces him to um jt walsh's character who is basically promising him that he's going to produce his first film for him you know he's like working on writing it with him and he's kind of basically just kind of getting really full of himself more and more things with his girlfriend get screwed up things pretty much start to get screwed up more and more and more and then things start to really fall apart with the deal and then it's kind of like him trying to put everything back together again but it's a really good take on like Hollywood and producing the films and I kind of like the way it all like the resolutions everything to it too it's just it really is it also too is definitely a product of its time a little bit more to like 
different because like back then too when this was made a lot of music video directors too were kind of getting work too so it kind of goes into that too it goes into a lot more stuff like the early 90s Bart Martin Short though his character in this movie is the, one of my favorite things in the whole movie uh, just so over the top weird character of him as his agent and has some of the best lines in this this is not like a typical Christopher Gus movie though where it's like all improvised and things like that it's all more you know to the script and things like that but a lot of the people who are in his movies are in this i liked it though i really did like it like i said it was like it was surprisingly one that i had never seen before the next one this is not like a outstanding movie you know per se but it's always been a favorite of mine as a kid and both these two look great on blu-ray um and this is space invaders or spaced invaders and the one guy in this you know royal dano i'm always been a fan of that guy you know he's in killer clowns from outer space ghoulies 2 and this is basically about the group of these aliens that crash land on earth you know during halloween and basically people are around there thinking that they're just trick-or-treaters and not really taking them seriously because they want to come and conquer earth but no no one's really paying any attention to them whatsoever because they think that they're just these kids in costumes and it's the kind of crazy weird kind of effects of them and kind of very very dated effects and stuff but this has always been a favorite movie of mine as a kid I always remember watching this even as a kid though I knew it really wasn't a great movie you know and even like it's one of those kind of movies you just know that but it's just a fun movie like I just always have enjoyed watching it uh the next one from um Vision Films is Containment. And this is actually kind of an interesting one. It's basically about a group of people who are in this um, building and all of a sudden the one guy wakes up in there and they all start waking up like this and realize that they're kind of locked in they've kind of glued underneath their doors so they can't get out you see people in the buildings across the street like banging on the windows trying to get out not knowing what's going on and it's basically about some kind of a containment and some kind of a uh, leak or something has happened and all these people in this building and the building across the street are all kind of stuck in there and a group of the tenants kind of dug through the, the you know basically cut through the walls and stuff kind of all get together and have ganged up together and trying to figure out how they're going to get out of here and you know they're trying to take people you know one of the people you know that are in there trying to take care of the containment you know in the hazmat suits take one of them hostage and trying to figure out what's going on and if they're going to get out of here and why they're in here and if there's something if they're infected and you know what's going to happen if they are infected and it's going to become a zombie movie or what you know basically what's going to happen to them i thought it was relatively decent movie though and i always like these kind of movies too when they're all kind of set in one location and things like that and i thought it was actually pretty well done for what it was and like I said I always like those kind of like self-contained movies when you're trying to figure out what's going on with it the next one the actors from this one was from the the movie Teeth that I always it was actually a pretty cool movie, um, and I believe she directed this movie with the other star of this movie and even Kid you know from Kid and Play has like a cameo in this movie which I thought was kind of cool. But this movie is called Apartment Troubles and um, it's basically about these two girls that are living in New York. And they're kind of having all kinds of financial issues and not able to pay their rent. And they're kind of like, the one wants to do her art, the other one wants to kind of get into acting and things like that. And it's kind of them trying to figure out what they're going to do. Jeffrey Tambor is their tenant and he's kind of giving them all, like basically giving them favors and letting them stay. And he's kind of gotten to the point where it's like, you're, you're going to have to be out of here. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And they kind of make the plan of going out to L.A. And the one wants to kind of go on a type of show like American Idol. And the other one, they basically just want to go out there and kind of restart and try and maybe things will go better for them out in L.A. and go over there the one's family and that's essentially what it was is just kind of like a a story about them trying to get their lives figured out and figure out what they're going to do with themselves and see if they can kind of start over and get things together i liked it for, for, for the most part it has a lot like i said a lot of cameos in this movie like jeffrey tamber um will forte's in this movie a whole lot of different people like i said too the one from kid and play so it was cool to see him in that uh the next one my friend James Collins movie, which I was really interested in seeing this movie, and this is called um, Perni. I guess you know I'm very dyslexic, guys. So it's Pernicious, Pernicious, and it kind of like from the trailers and stuff like that, kind of made you feel like it was kind of be like a grudge kind of movie, and it does have that kind of vibe. But then it's got like an ultra violent, especially this one sequence in this movie. And I I won't lie, like sometimes when you see something like that, it kind of like haunts you. And I even had like a dream 
about like a like something like that happening to me a bit because <laughs> it was like a super super violent scene about with with these girls but it's basically about these girls who go on a trip to Asia and they kind of just they're out there on the trip and they end up going to stay at this house and there's this kind of statue of this golden girl in the um place that they're staying they're kind of wondering what this is and the one night they end up going out to this bar and then they're picking up these guys the one guy was in that movie um cam to cam which i really liked i think he must like live out in um you know where they shot this in asia or something because like I, he's been in a couple movies that they've shot out there i believe this was shot unless i'm totally wrong in bangkok but they basically you know, bring back these guys to the house, and then they have these kind of like, um, something ends up happening, and all of a sudden, they're like torturing these guys, and all these things are happening, and then they wake up the next day, and don't exactly know what has happened, they've all had this dream, and it's kind of them trying to figure out what's going on, and then things start to get worse and worse around this house, and like I said, it was actually pretty well done, and really cool settings as well, and I like to, um, one actress in this as well as in the I don't think it's the most recent season anymore, but the last series of uh, the Power Rangers. But a very cool one, too. A really cool setting as well. Uh, the next one from um, Wild Eye Releasing is A Plague So Pre um, Pleasant, which I just finished watching this one. This is like a different take on zombie movies, because normally it's like the people kind of want to kill the zombies off, and it's kind of like the typical kind of thing with the zombies and coming after them and things like this. At this movie... That people have kind of said you can't kill the zombies anymore. You've got to live with them. Because they kind of think that if they stop killing the zombies, then the zombies will stop coming after them. So it's kind of like, and it's kind of working for a while. And it's pretty much like people have to just go around the streets and like walk around the zombies. And the zombies want to eat oatmeal and things like that. It's it's like a totally different take on zombies. And, you know, it was very, very low budget. But they had did a really good job on the effects of the zombies. And having really pretty good sequences of a whole lot of zombies coming after them. But it's pretty much though, the, like the government's like putting them into these containments. But the zombies are kind of getting out and anyone who dies still becomes a zombie even if they're not infected by it so it's kind of like these zombies are taking over everywhere and some people there want to actually end up getting rid of them and that's pretty much what it is it's just like the people who do want to end up trying to get rid of these zombies because they just keep on coming everywhere and how they're going to do it uh the next one in wild eye as well is killing brook and this is uh i thought this was pretty good I didn't think, though, it would really exactly happen. Like, this is, you know, would really, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't feel like it really would happen. You know, these two, because it's basically these two girls who just got married and then end up going to this bar and then they end up end up sleeping with this guy. It just doesn't seem like right after you get married you would do that. But it, that's kind of part of the story, too, was kind of like, why would they do that? And, you know, and they're kind of regretting it. But, of course, so the guy that they end up getting, you know, deciding to do this with, is like this crazy guy who's going around killing people and torturing people, and he's just like a nut. The guy, though, wasn't like that creepy, though. He wasn't like super creepy, and I guess that kind of made it a little different, though, because he didn't look like the kind of guy who would be doing that. But of course, though, um, you know, they, they end up with the guy, and the guy's like, oh, can you take me back to my house? And of course, they take him back, and he ends up killing the one, and then the one ends up running off into the woods, and then a whole other trouble things happen. It becomes like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of vibe. But I thought, though, it was pretty well done. I, I I thought for the most part I liked it. I didn't feel like everything in it would happen. I just didn't feel like maybe it wouldn't happen like that. Um, the next one is a pretty cool documentary, and it's called um, it's called uh, uh, Monster Madness, and it's pretty much looking at monster movies. You know, uh, from the it basically goes all, throughout all the eras of like I think the sixties. No, yeah, the seventies, the sixties, seventies, and eighties, and um, has, the one guy that I know in this who passed away a couple of years back, Don Lifer, who was actually a teacher at my school when I was in his classes. Always really loved the guy, and he's one of the people too that really kind of got me interested in doing indie, independent film acting and things like that. But you know, he was in the movie Fiend and things like that, and he's actually in this documentary talking about some movies and things like that. But it's basically though talking like showing clips and interviews and all kinds of from different asked different kind of things. I don't even know where they found some of these interviews because it was kind of like weird stuff with Malcolm McDowell talking about Clockwork Orange and talking about all kinds of different sci-fi and horror movies, like I said, from the 50s, 60s, um, 70s, and 80s. And it's pretty well done. It kind of goes through it. Like I said, c compiles interviews and then has new interviews, people talking about their favorites and like kind of what got them into movies and things like that. But I think it's pretty good too for people who are interested in that kind of stuff. 
Uh, the next one, and I think this movie had a different name years back, and this is um, from MVD, and this is Death's Door, um, and it's a time movie with Tiny Lister, and it's basically about a group of these these people that are basically all getting these text messages, and it's kind of like, you know, House on Haunted Hill and stuff like that. They all get, like, invited to this house. You know, in the beginning of the movie, you see there's some kind of a magic act, and Tiny Lister is, like, the guy in helping him out with the magic, and then the guy gets caught on fire, and something terrible happens there. Like I said, though, this is years later in modern day. I mean, it was, that was in the beginning. It was, like, the early 19, like 1930s or so. And then, of course... The kids all start getting to this party, and Tiny Lister's there with like this burn on his face, and people who kind of come to the party that aren't invited, he kind of picks them up with their head and throws them out. It's like a really crazy thing going on, but of course they get there, and then they all end up getting in there, and then end up getting locked in, and Tiny Lister's kind of loose in the house, and they kind of wander into rooms, and it kind of becomes like traps like Saw, and it's kind of them trying to figure out how they're going to get out of here, and what's going on, and why they're all there together, but I thought it was actually kind of a fun, silly movie, but that's pretty much sensing what it was, and the last one, this is one that I've heard about for a while, and I'm glad it's finally out, because I was interested in seeing this, and it's a movie with Tom Servini, and it's called The Sadist, and it's pretty much about Tom Savini is this like crazy war veteran who's basically gone and cracked up. He's going around the farms like killing pigs, killing people out in the woods, and it's about a group of different kind of people who are out there, hunters and people like a family out there going for a trip and things like that out into the woods, and he's out there attacking and killing them and basically just going nuts out there and them trying to figure out what they're going to do. You know, the police are also kind of investigating that the pig that was killed and other things that are weird that are going on around, on around the town. And it's like, are these people going to, going to get away from Tom Sweeney's character? And it's kind of this them getting killed off and <clears throat> him basically going after them. But it's a really, I, th I thought there was a kind of a fun movie. I've always liked Tom Savini as an actor, and like I said, this is one that I had wanted to see for a while, and he actually plays like a really good, crazy person that's going after these people. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this video, and thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.